In this lesson, we're going to learn about using the response redirect. So when we need to move from one servlet to another or from a servlet to a page, and we want to have the code do that so that the user has come to one page and has done something and maybe sent off a request to us, we get that into our servlet. Now we do some processing and it's time to send them somewhere else. One of the ways that we can move within the system is to use the redirect. The redirect is part of the HTTP servlet response object. So we have the ability to grab a hold of that and just use it to move from link to link. So this is gonna give us just a little quick chance to create a couple more quick, easy servlets just so we get used to doing that. And we can see when this all comes together, how the redirect works. So let's create a new servlet underneath of our current servlets package. And let's call this one start servlet. And so that's just going to be a regular old servlet and it's going to have no parameters and we'll change the mapping here in a moment. And again, we have the do get and the do post just in case we need to use those in the long run. Here's our start servlet. For our start servlet, we're actually just gonna grab a hold on the do get and we're going to grab a hold of the response object itself and we're going to go ahead and just forward on. So what will happen is we'll try to start on start servlet and we'll see that it will actually just go ahead and immediately redirect us. We're not going to do anything else. Obviously, in the real world, here you'd be doing your processing, so you can imagine how that would work, and then once your processing is done, you would call this send redirect, and then you send it to a link. So what's going to be our link? Well, we're going to create a servlet in a moment called results servlet, and we'll put it under the hidden servlets link as well, hidden servlets, and that's all small, the way we set that up, and then we'll just call it results servlet.do, and we'll go ahead and allow that to be done. So this servlet really isn't doing anything in our example here, but in the real world, again, once you would do this in the real world, you would actually be doing something and then sending off the redirect to take the user to another page or another servlet. So let's create the other servlet then, which is just going to be our results servlet. And we told it that we wanted the results servlet to have the URL path. We can edit that right here, hidden servlets and results servlet.do is the actual URL mapping that we want. So we can go ahead and finish that up. And there's our results servlet and you can see that it does automatically allow that mapping to take place. We're gonna need the print writer again. So I'm actually gonna leave it out for now because I want to show you the other way to get that back in case you're not used to using Eclipse. So the last time before we did our response, we grabbed a hold of this HTTP servlet response and we simply grabbed the print writer off of that and then spit out the HTML directly to the writer. So that's great and it works just fine. But there may be times when you want to actually change the content type if you were doing something like downloading a file or doing some other actions where your content type isn't necessarily text in HTML. So what you can actually do is grab a hold of that response object and you can say set content type. And by setting the content type, you can then change whatever you're going to send it, whether it's application slash PDF if you were downloading a PDF, for instance. Well here, of course, we're still just doing plain old text and HTML. So we're gonna go ahead and tell it that. And it's always a good idea to tell your response what to expect from you anyway. So that's not a bad practice to get into, even if you're just doing text and HTML. So what we're gonna do now then is grab the print writer once again. And here we don't have print writer imported. So this is where we're going to see the problem. And we're gonna set that to the response.getwriter. And so we'll see that print writer is now underlined red. Well, it's not there. So the easiest way to fix it, of course, in Eclipse would just be to import the print writer, java.io. We'll go ahead and do that. And that will automatically import it up here at the top. So here it added the print writer, just like we expected. Of course, we could have just simply put a star over top of the IO exception, and we would have had both, or we could have self-imported the java.io.printwriter knowing that we were going to use it. Once again, we have our path and we have everything in place. The only thing left to do is spit out some HTML. So we're gonna go ahead and do an out.printline. And here we'll just do some plain old HTML. It's really not gonna be anything fancy. But at this point, we're not really as concerned with what this part of the page is doing. What we're trying to do is learn how to use the redirect. So here we're just gonna say the results are received. And let's close off the H1 tag. We can actually expand this so that it's easier to see. We can double click on that and we'll expand it. Slash body. And we'll do a slash HTML to close this off. And so that wraps up our servlet here that's going to get results once we've completed our original servlet, which was the start servlet. So everything should be in place. The only thing left to do is look at the start servlet's starting location. So we have slash start servlet. That's not bad. Considering the fact that we're doing a common servlet that we probably want users to get to if we're asking for user input, this isn't a bad starting point. So let's go ahead and leave start servlet. 
And what this is actually going to do is cause us some problems. We'll see here in just a moment when we try to do some redirecting. So let's go ahead and run the start servlet. I'm going to bring this down again by double clicking it so that I can see my server. It is currently started. I'll have to restart it then. So we'll choose our existing server. We'll make sure hello world servlet's in there. We'll restart it. And again, you can click on those boxes to not have to see that every time, but I want to show that just so that we have everything in place and you guys can continue to see it. But when I got redirected to slash hidden servlet slash results servlet.do, my page broke. Well, why did that break? Well, we started at start servlet, right? Start servlet. And it changes, tries to run from start servlet. Oh, it's not even start servlet. Look, we need to put in our project. Hello world servlet. Our path has to match the project name and then servlet. So there's our actual path. So we have hello world servlet and then it redirected and notice what it did. It removed the project name. So it caused us a huge problem because not only did it remove the project name here and not work, it removed the project name and when we tried to type in the URL to get back to where we were, it was a non-working URL. So we need to go back to start servlet and we need to evaluate what's happening. Well, basically here, make this big again. Here you can see that the slash hidden servlets should actually be slash project name, which was hello world servlet slash hidden servlets slash results. So let's just make sure hello world servlet matches. So now when we redirect, we should actually be able to work from the fact that our path should maintain that hello world servlet project. So let's go ahead and run this. And I'm just going to click finish this time and restart it. Here's our start servlets, and it redirected us right to the hidden servlets results servlet DO. That's excellent. That's exactly what we wanted, and everything is working. One last thing to note then is now our hidden servlets URL is shown. So is there a way to prevent that? Absolutely, and that's what we're going to learn next time.